Let me read to you a passage from the 10th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 17 to 27. It's the Gospel for Monday of the 8th week in Ordinary Time. St. Mark writes, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Do not defraud. Honour your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, All these things I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go, sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. That's from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 27. It speaks to us of what I might call the good. What do I mean? Well, let me begin this way. If one compares the popular literature and drama of, say, the mid-20th century with that of 50 or 60 years later in our own day, there is one difference worth noticing. By popular literature and drama, I'm thinking of the fictional characters in comic strips, in the easily procurable popular novels, in Saturday cinema movies, which the average man in the street and young person read or watched at that time. I think of the characters such as Tarzan, Superman, The Phantom, Hopalong Cassidy, and other characters who featured in action-adventure series watched or read by the ordinary populace. There was no religion in a formal sense in these characters, but morally they were very good and they resisted the evil actions of others, and by evil actions I mean actions that harmed others. They were morally good while being secular in respect to religion. There were two clearly identified moral realms in the world, good and evil. Good was naturally attractive and evil was naturally repulsive, and this often showed itself in the handsome features and manner of the good characters, and in the ugliness of the bad. The broad picture in such media and cultural outlets implied that there is a good and an evil, that there is a struggle between the two, that goodness is attainable, and that goodness will, generally speaking, win out in the end. Now, the characters of popular literature, drama and culture of 60 years later, in the early 21st century, do not portray such a straightforward picture of the moral world. Religion is still absent from the scene, but moral goodness is not nearly so obvious. It is not as common for the hero of the adventure to be simply good, nor for the good to prevail in the struggle. 
In the contest between good and evil, the upshot that is often a miserable stalemate, while in many respects this is a truer reflection of the objective situation in which fallen man finds himself, the unfortunate feature of this picture is its inherent scepticism as to the reality and nature of goodness and the possibility of its flourishing in the human being. While it is implicitly accepted that moral goodness is desirable and indeed required of man, there is a deep scepticism as to its objective nature and attainability. There is scepticism as to real goodness and as to the possibility of a truly good man. In our Gospel today we read of a man who eagerly comes to our Lord seeking the way to life everlasting. We read, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now what we notice is our Lord's immediate response which might seem to some to be somewhat irrelevant to the man's question. Our Lord picks up immediately not on the question itself, but on the title by which the man addresses him. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. In fact, our Lord's answer was magnificent. It was timeless and especially apt for our own modern secular skepticism as to religion and as to the moral life. Our Lord immediately directed the attention of the man not to the path to, ult to ultimate life, to happiness and flourishing, but to its fundamental source. How may I attain eternal life and happiness? First of all, think of the good God. How may I flourish in an ultimate sense? Turn your attention immediately to the one and only inherently, necessarily, and absolutely good reality, which is God. Our Lord is instantly implying that true happiness is obtained by attaining goodness, and that objective goodness as a transcendent and necessary reality is found in God alone. If you wish to be happy, seek it in being good, reject all evil, but goodness is to be found only in God who is its ultimate locale and source. At the heart of all reality and the object of all striving is the good, which is God alone. Therefore, if you seek life and happiness, then follow the way of God and seek to do His will. It is this that will lead you to your true flourishing and happiness. It is God alone who, in an ultimate objective and necessary sense, is good. It is for him to bestow goodness just as it is for him to bestow existence itself. God is the key to man's instinctive desire to be good and to his instinctive sense that he should and must be good. The answer to modern man's scepticism as to the objective reality and possibility of goodness is given by our Lord. No one is good but God alone. That is to say, ultimately goodness exists and that goodness is God himself. The gods of polytheism were often far from good and never were they absolutely good. Classical Rome could not frame its laws on the basis of the goodness and example of the gods. If anything reason had to take precedence as the source of their notion of good laws and practice. Revealed religion and in particular that revelation which was given in the person and teaching of Jesus Christ made manifest the God of all goodness. No one is good but God alone. God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is himself the one God whom his Father is. And the Holy Spirit is the same one God. The good news of the Gospel is that God has entered the world to empower us to be good with a share in his own goodness. Let us follow his commandments to the end. It will take us to life everlasting.